Be authentic, be original, be true to yourself. Don't copy other people, forge your own path, find your own sound. Have you heard that before? Yeah, everyone has, but how the hell do you do it? Well, stick around, we're gonna find out. Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. So today, what we're gonna look at is finding your own sound. How can you go about developing a sound that's unique, authentic, and represents you as an artist, and ideally helps you stand out from the pack? Well, it's not easy. You hear it thrown around as advice from label heads and big time DJs, but in practice, it can be a bit overwhelming. Well, this is actually a process that I went through for myself as an artist, and I can say that while it's not easy, it's definitely worthwhile and beneficial. Having some parameters and direction to work within really helps to kind of define your path in the studio. And having a consistent and recognizable sound will really help you to build an audience and connect with your listeners. So the way I went about this is basically doing a bit of soul searching and thinking about what it is that I actually like. Prior to this, my sound was a little bit all over the place. I was doing a combination of following trends, trying out different things, and following my wide range of interests. But it meant that the sound of my output was quite inconsistent, and I wasn't really honing in and specializing on one specific sound. So the process I went through was to basically evaluate what it is that I like about the different styles of music that I was making, and then figure out a unique way to combine elements from that into something that represents me. So I still have a pretty broad taste in house and techno music, and I do from time to time end up following a tangent, but the feedback that I get from people is that I do have a unique and recognizable sound, and that's what we want. So what we're gonna to do today is try and combine some genres to come up with a unique original sound. So I'm gonna do this in the classic against the clock format. We're gonna put 10 minutes on the clock, and what we come up with in that 10 minutes is what we've got. So to determine the direction, I've put a bunch of genres onto these pieces of paper. I'm folding them up and put them in my beanie. And now let's randomly pick some and see what we get. Not looking. Techno, perfect. <laughs> my speciality. Disco. Okay, one more, I guess. Afro. Okay, this should be interesting. What I'm gonna do is give myself 10 minutes to try and make a track combining these genres. To say I'm nervous is an understatement, but let's get into Ableton and do this thing. All right guys, so here we are inside Ableton, ready for this challenge. <laughs> I've gotta say I'm a bit nervous. I've never done something like this before um, with this shorter period of time, but let's go. Right, so I've got my genres here. Techno, disco, afro. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is I'm going to find a kick first. I'm also going to define a few parameters for myself. So I'm going to go for like techno, bass, kick, low end kind of thing. I'm going to go for afro drums and maybe vocals if we get that far. And then some kind of like disco melody. I'm not sure, maybe I'll find a disco sample or something like that. So obviously my sample library is not full of techno samples and, and given the time constraints, I need to work quickly and find things quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Loop Cloud to find the samples and source them and then we'll try and arrange something in Ableton. So before I actually start the timer, I'm gonna find a kick as I think it's important to have that to kind of anchor everything. Let's jump into Loop Cloud. And what I've prepared here is a few packs. I've got my favorites. So I think it's really important to spend time outside of your production sessions, sourcing samples, whether it's in something like Loop Cloud or Splice, sourcing inspiration. I've got notes and post-it notes and all sorts of things everywhere, everywhere I look. In, in Recordbox and Beatport, I've got carts, playlists full of like tracks with inspiration or ideas, things I should sample. Same on YouTube, I've got playlists saved. Uh, I have notes on my phone. I've got post-it notes. I've got post-it notes all over the studio, all over my house. Just ideas and things collected and saved everywhere. So that when I go into a production session, I'm not scrambling for ideas. I've got ideas and things organized at my fingertips. So anyway, this is my favorites in Loop Cloud. These are things that I've heard and thought, I like that, I could use that somehow. There's a lot, but it means that I've got a condensed list of things that have been pre-selected that I can search from. Then I went ahead and found a couple of Afro house packs to get some drums and stuff. I found this 
spectre atmospheric techno pack with a somewhat outdated photo of Paul and Rich looking very sprightly and moody. This is an older pack, but I'm sure it's still good. And then I've got a pack here that I own from Parida Saracini, which has got some really cool bits that I use anyway. So first things first, let's find a kit. I'm going to listen to some of these Parida Saracini ones and see how we get on. Okay. So I'm thinking this one, maybe this one here. Let's drag that in. This is going to be difficult, isn't it? Dragging stuff in here, uh, make that shorter. Drag this in, minus five. All right. So we've got a giant sausage kick ready for the techno low end. I don't know how you fit anything else around that, but we're going to find out. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set a timer on my phone here. Timer, 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes on the timer. And I guess we are starting. Counting down. Did I mention I'm nervous? <laughs> All right, let's go. Maybe this should be faster than uh, maybe 127. Is that a techno? All right, now. Uh, what are we gonna do first? Low end, right? Let's find a base. Now I'm not getting any. Hey, that sounds kind of cool, like disco-y. <laughs> That's just a bit of a fluke. Um, no. I just realized on this loop cloud thing, I've got an EQ, which is pulling out the low end. That's not helping me. Uh, turn on LFO tool. And let's go back to loop cloud and try that first bass line again with some actual bass. Oh yeah. Okay, I've got a audio track here, bass. And drag that in. Minus five. Jesus, okay, two minutes down, I can't believe that. Um, okay, let's find a Afro loop, Afro house, more hi-hats, drums, mixed, fuck. Uh, this one, I mean. Oh, top, 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 top loop. Okay. Oh. 
I don't like that, but again. Okay, I do like that. Get another one here. Okay, shit, four minutes down. I can't believe that. Okay. Uh, Okay, now I'm going to go to my favorites and let's filter this by disco, search for disco and shit, what key were we in? Um, A minor, I just have to believe that. So I can go here to audio filters and A. Uh, cool. So I've got this. Okay, I'm gonna quickly do a little disco edit on it. Boom, side chain. And auto filter, glue compressor. Okay, in my sample pack here, I've got string, string. Uh, shit. Okay, so that's F sharp, so G, G sharp A, three minutes left. It's just... Let's get a techno drum beat kind of thing. Techno hi-hats. Loops? No. Uh, Symbols, one-shots, drums, percussion, synth, where's top? Loops, oh my god. No. Okay, library. Uh, tops. Okay, almost two minutes left. Let's get a crash. And put that to eight bars. Maybe 
we put it here and go. Uh, let's see on my favorites, have I got a fill? Uh, how do I do that? Take that off. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna close that. Go to favorites again. Not properties, collections, favorites, and how do I search it? Fill. Oh my god. Uh, okay, search. Drum fill. Bring it. Okay, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna go warp 124. Are we doing for time? 25 seconds. Oh my god. Uh, loop. Five bars. Minus five. And move it to the end. Not five bars, four bars, you idiot. Okay. Oh my God. Honestly, I don't know how those guys do it on those against the clock videos, because I guess I wasn't organized. I just really did this straight off the cuff, but it's difficult. Um, let's listen to what we've got. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's like a starting point for a sketch, like, you know, it's something different. And it's, I got this through just like picking <laughs> these out of a hat, you know? So obviously, you know, I'm not really creating much in here. I'm just dra dragging in some loops, but you can find inspiration from like random ideas like this. And as I said, that's essentially how I went about creating or finding my sound, albeit in a little bit more of a methodical and thought out way, but so like always, I will upload these project files to Patreon, but you can also find the project files there for all my other videos. And by joining up to Patreon, you have access to submit tracks for live stream video feedbacks. And the next live stream feedback will be next weekend. It's first in, first served, and I do two hours and as many tracks as I can fit into that two hours. So if you wanna be involved, then jump in. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a pretty fun video, not too serious, but I hope you can see how you can use this kind of technique to find your sound and find some direction in the studio. Let me know in the comments, where have you drawn inspiration from and how do you define your sound? If you're looking for more production tutorials, then check out this playlist, it's really good. Anyway, that's it from me today. We'll catch you next time, peace.